God bless you. You may be seated. Thank the Lord for... Uh, thank you, Deacon Clark. Amen. Tonight, we're going to strive to uh, let you out, like we said, 9 o'clock. Though this is our last seminar, but it's not the last time we're going to hear about fornication. Um, but I've been directed by the Lord simply because of the multiple counseling uh, through this year, and it was just an eye-opener that uh, we need help. Amen. Amen. And uh, when God allowed me to see a need, uh, we don't know when he's coming back. And instead of trying to wait to after a series of Bible class to bring in a particular lesson, uh, I just rather double up and teach. That way, uh, you can be made free and I can be made free from that accountability of you not knowing. Amen. Because it's a serious matter. Uh, the devil don't want us saved. And he's have thrown out all kinds of baits and snares for the intention to capture and to destroy. And being around for thousands of years, he knows what we like. So, therefore, we have to trust God. And let me just say this, and we're going to get into the lesson. It does not work. Let me just ask this. How many want victory? <laughs> victory will not come just by you hearing what God says. You have to hear, be persuaded, and the persuasion will cause you to do it. A lot of people, they hear, but they're not persuaded, therefore they don't do it. But you have to hear the word of God and let God alter our thinking. It doesn't matter how you felt before. Once you hear God's view, once you hear God's way, it's to relinquish our way of thinking and embrace what God has said because it is his word that will repel any power, not our word, not our thoughts, not our way, not our idea, not our method. It cannot hold the test. But if we hold God's word, it will hold anything that fights against it. And that's why it's very important to hear what God is is saying. Maybe later on in the future we're going to deal with it, but it was something that God has just been resonating in my heart and my mind and that is he tells the, the disciples after he prayed uh, uh, I mean cursed the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree and he walked away. And then the next day the fig tree was withered away and he walked right past it. He didn't check to see did God do it. He just walked right past it. It was the disciples that said, Master, look, the fig tree. Look how it's withered up from the roots. And he says these four powerful words. Have faith in God. Faith is his word. The more words you get, the more you can put your confidence in God. And tonight, I'm telling you, towards fornication, your victory is have faith in God. Do what God say do. And you and I will have the victory. We're dealing with fornication, the forbidding pleasure. The forbidding pleasure. And again, if you, uh, uh, we're dealing with that uh, coming together and having intercourse in an unlawful way. Any illicit sexual activity falls in the category of fornication. It doesn't matter how you put it and how you look at it. Uh, God wants us to keep these vessels in sanctification, cleanseness, and in honor, respect, recognizing that we have been bought with a price, that we are not our own, that our body and our minds belong to God. It has been purchased 
with a price, not with such corruptible things as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus, that this whole being here, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my hands, my feet, everything concerning this body, my mind, which you can't see, my thoughts, the, the seat of my intellect belongs to God. So not just what I do, it's what I think, what I'm meditating on. We say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. But notice what David said before. Keep me, Lord, from presumptuous sins. You see, keep me. You see, there's something that we have to recognize that this bad boy can't be trusted. I don't care how long you've been in this faith. It doesn't matter how long you've been victorious. Now, I got a good report, but it don't mean I can always have that. That has to be maintained. I cannot, just because I've been married for nine, almost 30 years, and, and no woman can point their fingers at me, it's not by willpower. It was not by willpower. It wasn't because I was so smart and so wise. It was because I was so ignorant and so weak that I relied on God. And watch this, and I have not gotten no wiser of myself. It's still the word of God. Still the word of God. The word will keep you. And we're going to find out that this is a real simple remedy for victory. But we are the ones that make it hard. And God ain't going to change it. He's not going to update it. He's not going to upgrade it and give us another remedy because we just think that the remedy he's given us is just too easy. And that's, run from it. That's, that's, that's it. Victory in flight. When it comes to fornication, there is no other remedy. It's victory in flight. That's it. God is not about to remove any propensities. He's not about to remove any attractions. He put that there purposely. If you got a, a, a desire for the opposite sex, you ought to thank God because he put that there. But there's an order on how it works. See, there, there's, a, there's a, the way that two come together to be one flesh, and that's in holy matrimony. So I want us to go ahead and get 1 Corinthians. The 10th page. 5 and 6, and we're just going to give scriptures as we read them. 1 Corinthians, the 10th page, we're going back, 5 and 6. But with many of them. But with many of them, uh-huh. God was not well pleased. With many of them, God was not well pleased. Read. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, now notice, he, he begins... To uh, jump to re, uh, verse uh, line one real quick, so we can run through that. Moreover, brethren. Moreover, or I'm bringing another subject. Uh huh. I would not that I, you should be ignorant. I don't want you to be without the lack of knowledge. This is a a church. You're thriving in spiritual gifts, but you're full of carnality. And I don't want you to think that just because God is moving you with spiritual gifts, you lack nothing when it comes to spiritual gifts. But your walk with God is very weak and carnal. And I don't want you to be ignorant concerning what God has done to Israel. Just because you've been brought out of the world don't mean that you're going to be directly put into heaven. There is actually a proving ground. God brought them out of Egypt, but everybody didn't make it to Canaan. So don't let your guards down. Corinthian church, don't think that is well with your soul just because you have come out of the world through the baptism in Jesus' name and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and now it's just smooth selling. No, you have not arrived yet. You still got to be on your guard. 
You're dealing with the adversary, the devil, the world, and your ungodly nature that's striving to overthrow you or meet the goal. I didn't come over here to try to make it. I came over here to make it. But just because I've been born again and I'm out that world now, I've been saved, I've been delivered, God broke the yoke, I'm no longer a slave to that Adamic nature. I no longer have the can't help us. He's freed me to make a choice now, and yet I've been delivered from the bondage of sin, the bondage of sin. It has no more control over me, yet I can fall back into sin if I don't walk after the Spirit. If I don't walk after the Spirit, and no matter how long I've been saved, if I don't walk after the Spirit or give myself to the Word of God, listen to what God has to say by the man and woman of God, hear what they have to say, believe what's being said through the, the Holy Writ, the Holy Word of God. God give you understanding and revelation of what's being preached or taught. Then when we go out there, God will bring to our minds, according to the situation, what we ought to do by the Spirit of God. And when he brings it to you, you got to obey it. When you obey it, it's walking after the Spirit. When he says, turn, turn. When he says, get away, get away. When he says, don't answer that. When he says, nip it in the bud, nip it in the bud. That's walking after the Spirit. Doing what God says. So he says, I would, have not, I would not that you be ignorant, brethren. That what? How that all our fathers were under the cloud. All of our fathers were under the cloud. All of them. Uh-huh. And all passed through the sea. Every last one of them, God had one deliverer. They had one path, one way out. He didn't make multiple paths. He didn't say, I don't care, I'm going to have three leaders. One of y'all go through the Red Sea, the other one go over the mountain. No, one leader, one path. One path. And they all had to follow Moses if they wanted to be delivered. Every last one of them. Let's read. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud. And they were all baptized unto Moses and in the cloud. Uh -huh. And in the sea. And in the sea, uh-huh. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Notice, and all had the same feeding. Now we have been all baptized into Jesus Christ. And we all have been uh, made to drink of the same spiritual drink. In other words, we've been baptized in Jesus' name and been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we all are getting this apostolic teaching. Every last one of us in here. But everybody that's been delivered, everybody that's been baptized, everybody that's been filled, and everybody that's hearing is not going to go to the end. With many of them that were baptized. With many of them that were filled, with many of them that heard sound doctrine, were overthrown in the wilderness. And I'm letting you know that fornication, he names around four to five of them. And we're going to get fornication was one of the things that overthrown around 24,000, 24,000 Israelites, 24. Thousand. Notice, he says, with many of them, many, not some, with many. And 24,000 is just dealing with fornication. There were other things in which God was not well pleased. We ain't going to get it. But, but they lusted at the evil things. He sent serpents constantly. So it's more than 24,000 that fell in the wilderness. Let you know that he says, with many of them, he was not well pleased. 24,000 fell in one day due to fornication. Fornication. Showing you that God is not playing, but you got an enemy who knows God. You got an enemy that's trying 
to curse us. Y'all get it. Because right now we're blessed. If you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and God, you fill within yourself, there is therefore now no condemnation to me that is in Christ Jesus, who are not walking after the flesh but the spirit. You're blessed. Amen. And I'm going to say this, and while you're in Jesus, ain't no demon in hell can stop you. Amen. You're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. The favors of God is with us. And the devil is trying to change it. He's trying to get us out the favors of God. And this is one of the ways he's doing it. Many people that have been born again are falling into fornication from the pulpit to the door. The pulpit. That's why they don't teach on fornication. Because a lot of them are fornicating. Some of them say that it's not Bible. Pastors are saying it's not Bible. These worldly preachers are getting away from it. Not cleansing God's church. You got to preach against fornication. You got to tell them, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. We don't hang around fornicators. We don't condone fornication. We don't make statements to each their own. No, God got an order. He has an order. And he wants every man to keep what he has said. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage, holy matrimony. God got a way. He's not recalling his Bible back to change it. He has a way. Man and a woman. Man and a woman. And if two unsaved people get married, God stills honor it. But that's not his desire. He wants a saved man and a saved woman. But if you're not saved, get married. Two unsaved people, get married to keep from shacking. But if you're saved, if you're saved and single, don't you go out and get an unsaved. If you're saved, don't get an unsaved. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. God don't want no illegitimate children. Or unclean seed. That's Bible. We say sanctify wife, sanctify the husband. That don't mean that because you're sanctified, God's going to save your husband. That ain't what that means. Sanctify husband, sanctify the wife. And that means that I'm sanctified, so my husband's going to be sanctified. No, that you got it all wrong. What it has, keep on reading. What it has reference to is if he, if you are saved. And you were one where y'all both were not saved. You both was not saved. Then one of you gets saved. If he desire to stay with you, stay with him. Stay with him. Because marriage has made you coming together where it's not undefiled. Therefore, your children will be legitimate. That's what that means. God don't want illegitimate children or children out of wedlock. Now, if they hear, they hear. But I got to tell this generation, God didn't want no six daddies to one woman. He didn't want that. He didn't want children asking, is your daddy come pick you up for Christmas? That's a normal talk. That's a normal talk. It's never was God's intentions. Never God's intentions. And why we got away from it, God's way, is because people don't want to submit to God. But irregardless if they want to submit or not, somebody's going to cry out God's way. And God's way works. God's way brings happiness. God's way brings no regrets. You might not understand it right away, but you'd be glad you obeyed. With many of them, God was not well pleased. Many of them 
dropped dead in the wilderness, was brought out by God and destroyed by God. Y'all get that? Brought out by God, not destroyed by the devil, destroyed by God. And I'm telling you, don't play with God. Realize that when you go through these phones and tablets and computers, that's breadcrumbs to lead you to fornication. And if he can get a hold of your thoughts, y'all stay with me. The devil is not sending folks your way. He got to first get in your mind. Your mind. If I can get in your mind, if I can get in your thinking, your meditation, your feelings and your desires, the body will follow. I just need to get in that control tower. So therefore, he got all these devices and all these different programs and all these things on your phone. It's hardly ever. Every time you turn around, somebody is on a phone. Somebody's before some computer or iPad. We spend more time now on devices than just normal conversation. Parks are empty. There used to be times where children played. There was no diabetes with children like that. Because they played. They played. You were told to go outside and play. Parks were full. You had to wait for a swing. Yeah, you threw swinging? No, I just jumped out. <laughs> and they get back on the swing. Now go to the parks. They're about empty. Used to drive around for basketball courts. Now you can pick and choose. Where are they? They at home. Just scrolling. And the devil's talking to their minds. And what are they seeing? They seeing nothing but ungodliness. Ungodliness. And the main thing that the devil is doing is this word pornea. Pornea. Fornication. Fornication. So with many of them, he was not well pleased, but they were overthrown. They fell. They were destroyed in the wilderness. Now let's get 1 Corinthians, because I want to show us that the devil is still working the same way. 1 Corinthians 6, uh, yeah, 6 and 9, and then we're going to drop down to 11 and 20. We're not going to go through all those ungodly things because of time. We're going to highlight in 6 and 9, fornication and adultery, and then we're going to drop down 11 through 20. Go ahead, Sister Chumley, if you would, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not? Know ye not? Uh huh. That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Notice, the devil don't want us to inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in us right now. That's what, when we're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. You can't say it's over here, over there. It's in us right now. But notice this the kingdom of God is coming. There's a literal kingdom. It's an everlasting kingdom. His kingdom shall have no end. And if you're not, if he's not reigning in you now, if you're not submitting to him now, if he's not Lord to you now, then know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Why callest thou me Lord, Lord, and you do not what I say? Yet we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Not unrighteousness, righteousness. But God want us righteous right now. Right now. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's holy in heaven. It's righteous in heaven. It's godly in heaven. And I'm going to walk the same way in an ungodly world by the power of God, which is in me, which is the kingdom of God. Amen. You're the Lord. I'm a citizen of heaven. But right now I'm on earth. 
But Lord, thy will be done. I follow the rules and laws of heaven. You are my Lord. While y'all voting for different, Jesus is my president. He's my president. And watch this. And there is no terms with him. He's the everlasting king. His rules uh, we abide by. It, super, it actually supersedes any land of the law. You can't go to jail for fornicating, but you can go to hell for it. His law matters. His law matters. And that's why I'm letting you know the devil knows that just because God brought you out, just because God brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light, this is darkness, you all, but the baptism and repentance, let me go back, penitence, that worketh repentance, that cause you to be baptized in his name and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, the devil knows that though you, God has brought you out of the world and brought you out of darkness into in Jesus Christ or this marvelous light, he knows he's still got a chance to destroy you. You still have a chance. How is that? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither what? Be not deceived. Don't you fool yourself. And don't let no other fool yourself, cause you to be fooled. I don't care who it may be. I don't care what robe they wear, what collar they have, what they got in front of their name. Nobody supersede what the word of God says. And I'm going to say this too. Just because you fornicated and say, Lord, forgive me, you better make sure you've been forgiven. Because only God can wipe the guilty conscience. You know if you've been cleansed. You know if you're back. You can say I'm back, but God is the one that has to blot out that guilty conscience. He's the one that got to tell you you're forgiven. He's the one that got to put you back into the body. Because I'm going to let you know when you fornicate, you fornicate, you sin against your own body. Your own body. We're going to bring that out a little bit. That's why there's nothing. He says, as becoming saints, let this not be once. 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 You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're going to make mistakes? Yes, you're going to make mistakes. Why are you preaching this way? Because I want to put fear in your heart. When I say fear, respect, honor. I'm not going to play with God. That when and if a person falls, it, you're so broken. It wasn't presumptuously. It was one that, one that God has to, he sees your knowledge and he sees where you're at. But when you get teaching like this, he's holding you accountable. He's holding you accountable. Grace will keep you. Grace will keep you. I don't care what situation you're in. If you never had a wife... God can keep you. If you never had a husband, God can keep you. If you've been married and he or she is not doing her marital duties, God still can keep you. If something happens to your spouse, God still can keep you. Well, they say, well, well Jeff, how do you know? Did you experience that? No, I ain't trying to drink all those cups. But I believe God's word. Amen. Now to him Amen. that is able to keep you from Falling. and present you outless. He's able, not me. I don't got to know. Well, can't, well, no, 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 no. I'm just letting you know what my life and my God did it for me in this but I don't know what your plot is or lot is. I don't know what it is, but I know the same God that has kept us. Same God that has kept others who lost loved ones. See, somebody is in your plot right now that's doing it God's way. The saints shall judge the world. It don't mean, yes, no, you're guilty. No, no, no. It means that the grace of God in man's life 
is going to take any excuses that it could not be done. Because God got somebody in every area where they're doing it his way, proving the grace of God. Proving the grace of God. And I'm just letting you know right now, God can keep you. He can keep you. He can keep you. So he, he, uh, uh, let's go to, uh, uh, let's read that again, 1 Corinthians. Know ye not uh -huh. that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh-huh. Be not deceived. Don't you let no one trick you, neither your own heart. Neither your own heart. Don't let your heart trick you to say, well, you know what? I'll, I'll go ahead and satisfy myself, and then I'll just, Monday, I'll just start a, a five-day fast. I'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm to start. That's how the heart works, guys. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it will fool you. It will trick you. It's try to make ways the same nature that makes you try to get off your denial is the same one that would tell you it's okay to fornicate. Same nature. You see, God's love. God's love. And I don't believe he's going to just send me to hell because I, he knows, my, he knows my, my thoughts. He sure do. That's why he wrote your answer before your thoughts. Because he knows your feelings. And he knows what you're going through, so he gave you that answer for it. He knows what. Yeah, he do. But he's not about to take his word back to adjust it for your thoughts. You got to relinquish your thoughts and submit to his thoughts. For his ways are not like our ways. Neither his thoughts are ours. He says, let's read. Neither fornicators. Notice, neither fornicators. If you're a fornicator, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. I'm just letting you know, you're not going to inherit Zachary and Jeremy, the kingdom of God. You're not going to inherit it. You're not going to inherit. And the devil knows it. So that's why you're tempted with it. That's why it's one of those things that he throws out in the church. Because he knows that if I can get you in this, I can trap you. And it's not. I know people don't believe this, but I'm telling you this. It's not as easy to get back to God as people have made it to be. It's not. And God got to put you back. Nobody can put you back but God. God is the one that got to touch your heart. You got to feel the love of God. You got to feel it. And remember, Esau sought what he had done. He sought for the, 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 that uh, birthright with tears and couldn't find it. Reject it. And I'm letting you know, you don't know when God says, enough. 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 That's why, keep your body. Those propensities, that, those urges, that pulling, sometimes you can wake up hot. Just facts. You can wake up hot. Out of nowhere, you ain't watch nothing. Just being in this body, got urges pulling, and it seemed like it just won't go away. And the, the, the imagination of the minds give you different ways on how to relieve yourself. But let me just say this, that pulling and that presentation, it will not be there all way. It's either two ways it's going to subside. You either fulfill it and you're going to leave with regret because it's gone now. It's satisfied. Or you're going to hold your ground. You're going to submit to what God has said, which is resisting the devil. And then those propensities got to go. It'll come back later, but it got to go. Two ways. You either fulfill it or resist it. It will go. But those are the two ways. And I know what it's like on both ends. Whether it's anger, I'm just showing you, you don't have to be fornication. I'm talking about fulfilling the flesh. Period. You got to urge. Sometimes it can make it be, I'm just giving you an example. So it's not always fornication. You can have an urge 
of that vengeance, urge to lie, urge of anger to get back at folks, and you want to be satisfied. You got, it's either two ways. You're either going to do it and feel good. Now that flesh feel good. Got off his chest. Or you're going to resist it. Now I'm talking about anger. I'm talking about you upset. You ready to punch walls. You ready to move mountains. You two things. You either bring that imagination down. You got to delete it. You got to pull it from, uh, pull it from your mind and replace it with the will of God. And those feelings start to subside. I'm just telling you how the word of God, the power of God works. The word of God works. It works. I don't care what you're going through. We're just dealing with fornication as the urge. But this works for any type of adamic pulling, adamic uh, uh, desires, these ungodly propensities, these ungodly inclinations that automatically lean this way. When somebody says, shut up, anger rise up or a threat, you bet not. And when they say, you bet not, you being grown, you want to say, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? You better watch your threats. You hear people, you bet not. Or oh, what? That's in your nature. Or what? That's your nature. Notice, notice, notice. So, so, so that or what? I'm fulfilling that pool of anger and pride. You don't talk to me any kind of way. But instead of taking matters in my own hands and not showing the, the uh, uh, character of Christ, uh, those same feelings, I got to remember what God said. And don't worry. Out of all the teachings that we've been taught, the Holy Ghost will bring to your mind at once the things in which God has said. Be slow to speak, quick to hear, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Turn away this harsh language with kind words. Blessed are the peacemakers. You'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. And while you're saying that, when you do it God's way, all of a sudden, your soft answer, you can feel now those propensities going down because you're stepping in God's word. And I'm saying it works for fornication. There's a pulling. God is not going to stop that pulling. That's why it's called a warfare. We're in a warfare. God, and he's coming back for a victorious church. He's showing the devil, I don't have to pull them out of this weak frame body in order for them to get deliverance over you. Because I have overcome the world. Fear not, I have overcome this world. And because I have overcome this world, you also shall overcome. All you got to do is follow me. Walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust, the desires, the appetite, the pulling, the craving, the gratification of your flesh. It can be done. But you got to recognize the evil. Recognize the trap. Let's read. Nor idolaters. No, no idolater. Nor adulterers. No adulterers. Now we're going to stop there. No fornicators. No adulterers. No single person having sexual activity and you're not married, you're not going to heaven. No adulterers, you're married. I don't care if she ain't giving it to you. There's no grounds for you to go cheat on her. I don't care if he ain't giving it to you. There ain't no grounds for you to go cheat on him. You go on your knees and talk to Jesus. Jesus knows how much you can bear. He knows. And, I, and notice, and it's God's goodwill and pleasure for you to overcome. He's not going to tease you if you ask for help. I believe that. I believe that. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how much and you want to pull your hair out and how hard you may be. But if you go to God, go to God and say, Lord, I don't want this to control me. I don't want this to give me the wrong attitude. I'm getting snappy and, 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 and moody and all these other things. Lord, just help me. And God will get a hold of your mind. But, but you got to acknowledge where you at and realize I need you, Lord. 
Because I can't do this by myself. I can't do this. See, see, your, our victory is not going to be by our virtue or our strength or our ability. You ain't going to get it. The devil is stronger than us. The world is stronger than us. And our nature is stronger than us. You're not about to pull this down by your own willpower. You need Holy Ghost power. You need some real power of God. You got to be born again. I said you got to be born again. You got to be an authentic Christian to live this life. To resist the devil and all the things that he's throwing out now, you got to be one that's born again, born of the water, born of the spirit, and the word of God. You can't just be a carnal Christian where you just want to speak in tongues and shout and don't sit down and get no word in you. The word is what keeps you. The word is what keeps you. It's the sustaining power. He's the, he's the resurrection and the life. He brings you back to life and he keeps you alive. I am the resurrection and the life. I bring you back from the dead. And then I'll keep you alive. Eat me the bread of life. I'm the sustainer. I'm the keeper. But you got to eat the word of God. You got to believe what God said. I don't got to understand it, but Lord, if you said it, I'll do it. If it's that easy, I'll do it. And the answer is flee fornication. Let's, let's drop down to 11. And such were some of you. Such were some of us. All those ungodly Things that was above in, 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 in 9 and 10. He says, and such were some of you. Such, such, was, was, was. Were some of you, uh-huh. But ye are washed. We have been remitted. That word wash have the reference to remission of sins. You've been, you've been forgiven. And let me say this. All of us who've been born again, we all have been forgiven. Don't act like you ain't had nothing for God to forgive you from. We all had to be forgiven. All of us had to come by the water. All of us, as the fathers had to be under the clouds and the water, we all had to come. Because all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. We have been washed. Let's read. But ye are sanctified. We are sanctified. St. John 17 and 17, you all get it. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy truth. Thy word is truth. When you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, he's calling you out from among them. That's setting you apart, bringing you out from the world. See, this podium was not made in the forest. He had to be cut down and taken away from the forest. God don't work on the church while you're in the world. He never gave them the law while they were in Egypt. Got to bring you out of Egypt, then give you my law. The gospel brings you out of the world, and doctrine cleans you up. Doctrine cleans you up. And we're being sanctified, cleansed, uh, renovated by the word of God. Justified by the obedience of the word of God. Justified. Righteous. When you hear the word of God and do it, God deems us, he consider us righteous. Why is that? Because you are now proving by your works that you believe. Oh, it ain't of works. Well, show me your faith by your proclamation and I'll show you my faith by my, my works. Works validate your faith. Works uh, consummate your faith. Faith begins, y'all know what consummate means? To complete, to finish. You don't want to just marry, stand at the altar. There's a conclusion. You see, there's an excitement. You see, not just say the vows. I had one brother who said, well, <laughs> well anyway, consummate a completion. <laughs> <A complete. laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> he said, I'm bringing my mattress down to Alja. <laughs> I said, bro, you, you burning, but I'm letting you know once you get married, it gotta be more than just for sex. 
See, you got to be love. Yeah, you got to be love. If love ain't there, it ain't going to work. Yes, yes. Sex is just a, or being intimate, that's just a bonus. That's, a, that's one of the things that God puts in. But you better not base your, your wife or your spouse on how curvy she looks. You better not base your husband on how tall or dark or wavy his hair looks. No, you better do it according to the word of God. He says, beauty is vain. I'm saying, I ain't saying get no troll or nothing like that. I ain't saying that. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that you can have a beautiful woman and she can lose her beauty in a second. A grease fire can take that. And you're still stuck with her. So it got to be for character. It got to be for character. It has to be for character. Will this person push me around if I got in an accident and lost my mobility? Will that person still be faithful to me? Will he push me around? Will he stop at 7-Eleven, uh, uh, give me a Slurpee and push me around and be proud that that's my wife I'm pushing around? That's love for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, in sickness or in health, till death. Not till you get an accident, not till you lose your beauty. I, I need you all to stop being intimate because she has a condition. But until we find out what the condition is, y'all can't come together. Will you still hold your vows? And I'm trying to tell you all, that's when you go to God. Now you say, grace, Lord. You heard what they said. You see the situation I'm in. Grace. And the devil, what he does is he lets you try to see something that's not there. This is how it's going to be all the days of your life. And I'm trying to say, don't worry about that. What you do is wake up in the morning, give God thanks. And then you take one day at a time. And when you jump that hurdle, say, thank God. I made it. I'm, I, I victory today. And see, and that's all you want. You want victory day by day. That's all. The devil lets you see, well, you got you to gotta keep, if God don't give you a husband, if God don't give you a wife, look how long. You don't know. Keep your head down from day by day. Day by day. You'll realize, how did I get so far? Grace of God that carried you through day by day. You can't grab the whole year's worth of grace. You can't, you can't get the whole year's worth of strength. You are not going to get the whole year worth of wisdom and knowledge. It's going to be little by little, day by day. So don't grab the problems. Leave it over there. Since I can't borrow the strength for tomorrow, since I can't borrow the grace of tomorrow, since I can't borrow the wisdom that I have tomorrow, then I'm going to leave the problem. I'm going to leave the problem there. And, 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 and let God get me through this day. Through this day, day by day. Yeah, I ain't been married for so. It's okay. Grace. Show the grace of God. Let it be made known. It can be done. The grace of God. Let's read. But ye are justified. You're in, justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh huh. And by the Spirit of our God. Uh huh. All things are lawful unto me. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. Everything's not profitable. Uh huh. All things are lawful for me. Yes. But I will not be brought under the power of any. I can't, I'm not going to bring that out right now, but let's get to this next verse. Meats for the belly. Meats. Food. Food. That's what the word meats there mean. Food is for the belly. Belly, do more than your stomach. Your whole digestive tract, the intestines. The stomach, the, the lower, the large, the small, the belly. God, when God made that, he made it for food. I don't have to be no science teacher. God said it. Right. Food. That makes me know that all these intestines and the large intestine and the stomach and the acid had reference, was made, was created, was in the mind of God when he made man this is for food. And if he made man last, he made the food first. And the food was for man's stomach. 
So he says, meat is for the what? Belly. And what? And the belly for meats. And the belly's for meat. Uh-huh. But God shall destroy both it and them. Notice, he said, but God is going to destroy the belly and the food. That's, that's an insight there. That means that when we get our new bodies, it's not going to be the same way that you're eating now. See, he, behold, I make all things new. All things. This way of living, digestive tracts and eating, we'll eat, but the way God got us to, to extract it, it's going to be totally different. Totally different. He said, I'm a, I'm a, I will both destroy both the food, so you, the, the McDonald's and all the stuff that we like now, forget it when we get to heaven. The food that we eat now ain't going to be with the food you eat over there. Let's read. Now the body is not for fornication. Notice, the body is not for fornication. Let me ask you this. It, it grieves my heart sometimes. When I see people misuse food, when I see them uh, fill up uh, big tanks of pudding, banana pudding or vanilla pudding, and, 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 and people jumping in it and sliming one another with food or, or taking good pies and throwing it in people's face or cakes and throwing it in people's face, that's food. That's the misuse of food. There's others who would love to have that, that need that, that I lack that, and we have taken it and have misused it for the purpose it was designed. And so are these bodies are being misused. It was not meant for fornication. These bodies were created for the Lord. Out of everything that God created, there was nothing to exemplify what the invisible God was like. So he said, let us make man, us, spirit and word. Let us make man in our light, after our image and after our likeness. And out of everything that God created, Created. I'm even going a little further. Even angels didn't have this privilege to reveal the likeness of God. What is man? You're so mindful of him. What God is like, what he's like, he, he breathed into Adam the breath of life. Not mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Breathe there means a, a, a breath, which means word. He, he said live, and by the power of God's word, all of a sudden that man, and he became a living soul. Living soul. And he was able to, to make known what the invisible God was like. Out of all the creation, God created man for himself. And man for the Lord and the Lord for man. And notice this. So by him redeeming us, bringing us back into relationship with God, he's letting you know your body ain't made for no fornication. That ain't the reason why he created man. For fornication. That ain't, that's misuse of the body. The body's for the Lord. For you can make known what God is like. Now it's done through Christ Jesus. He's bringing us back to what we lost. The whole purpose of the body is to give God glory. To show the likeness of God. The, those, 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 those distinctions and individualities and characters and the temperance and all those things that, that actually represent God. He had man and he's bringing us back to it. That's why we're dealing with that uh, add to your faith these virtues. But he says it was made for the Lord. Let's read but for the Lord, uh -huh. and the Lord for the body. And the Lord for the body, uh-huh. And God hath raised up the Lord, uh-huh. And will also raise up us by his own power. No, no, I think you missed the word. And the Lord, is there both? Both, yeah. pardon. Let, let's, re let's read that again. And God hath both raised up the Lord. Notice, both raised, past him, up the Lord. When and will... Notice, when he said both, he's dealing with the Lord in us. Mm -hmm. But he's already spoke past tense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Because it's already done in the mind of God. Mm -hmm. So he says, he hath already what? And God hath both raised up the Lord uh -huh. and will also raise up us uh -huh. by his own power. God has both because he raised up Jesus from the dead by his own power. And because he raised him up and he humbled himself to, even to the death of the cross, which God knew he was going to do, he automatically, by the power of his word, decreed us blessed in him before the foundation of the world and already raised him, not only him up, but he's proof we're getting up by raising him up. He both raised him up. Let's read. Mm -hmm. Know ye not. This is what we're going to. That your bodies are the members of Christ. Your bodies are the members of Christ. Uh -huh. Shall I then take the members of Christ uh -huh. and make them the members of an harlot? Uh-huh, read. God forbid. God forbid. Let's read. What? What? Know ye not uh -huh. that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? No, uh, read. For two, saith he, uh -huh. shall be one flesh. Yes. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One spirit, let's read. Flee fornication. Notice, and I'm about to bring it to a close right here. It's that easy, but we just don't do it. Hmm. Flee fornication. Evacuate. Leave. Certain things you stand, but when it comes to fornication, get away from it. Withdraw yourself. Run from it. Flee from it. This is the danger. Know ye not that your bodies is not the body of Christ, members of the body. Members. One body, many members. But when one takes the member of Christ and hook it up, come here, Mimi. Hook it up. The Bible says a harlot. Now, she's not a harlot. But if a man hooks himself up and he calls himself be born again and hook up himself with a woman that's not his wife, mm -hmm. he has severed himself from the body of Christ. Y'all get this. And have attached himself to the harlot. You have a seat, daughter. I'm about to bring something out. He says, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. But homongers and adulterers, God will judge. And just as God's going to reward us for uh, 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 being in Christ Jesus, we have an inheritance. We don't deserve it. But everything God has for us in Christ, everything that God gives Christ, we are joint heirs with him because we are part of the body. Just think about it. If you're in Christ, God got all these things for us. Not only just a glorified body, we're going to reign with him. We're going to rule with him. We're going to also get a new name. Everything that Christ has been given, we're going to get also because we're in Christ, one body. But just as God reward those that are in the body of Christ, if you choose to leave the body of Christ to join a harlot in sexual activity, you're sinning against your own body. And you're now not numbered with the body of Christ, but you are now labeled and numbered with the whore. And time don't move it. Your one night, don't, God don't say, well, you, but this night while you're doing it, you're a whoremonger. No, 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 no. You're in that state until God forgives you. And if he don't forgive you, when he judged the whoremonger and the adulterer, you have been numbered with them. You're one with her. And I'm letting you know, it's that serious. You just can't go around and take God's body, have sex, and then wipe your mouth and think you're going to just get in the choir and sing again. 
get on the pulpit and preach again. Well, go teach. Uh-uh. Fornication is that serious. It severs you from the body of Christ. And you are now labeled, numbered with that whore. Whether it's a man, you're labeled with him. You're with that whole monger. Or a woman, that whore. And you're going to remain labeled with them till God forgives you. That's why it's that serious. That's why you just can't go out there and wipe your mouth and think you're going to get back. Just because you come to the altar don't mean you're back. That's why when God has restored you all, you ought to be happy. When God grants you forgiveness... And you know that you don't deserve it. You know I don't deserve it. Because he saw you. Ain't nothing. You, I got to stop. It, but you thought you was here. But he saw you. He still let you have his breath. He still let you have his heartbeat. While you was performing the sinful act. He could have cut you off. In that moment. And doing it, your secret self exposed you in your death, which has happened to some. Doing it secretly, and God exposed them in their death. In their death. And I'm letting you know, <laughs> you better think it over. When the devil throws these traps at you, just because people take it lightly, they don't know your God. But the men of God sin, knowing the terror of God. You see, a true man of God, knowing who he is. The word of God, many were overthrown in the wilderness. Knowing the terror of God, I'm trying to persuade men. Don't take the temple of the Holy Ghost and defile it with sexual activity and think that you're going to just always come back. Uh -uh, uh uh There's a great danger. You get a chance, you read David, Psalms 51. And that was a man that was not just hunting. That's what you call one that he didn't look for Bathsheba. He wouldn't sit up there being a peeking Tom. That was a man, let me go further, a man without the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost. But this man, he didn't, but, but notice when he fell into that sin. Look what it took for that man to get back. God wrote it and let that man write it down. That was never God's intention for him to write Psalms 51. But he fell. But look what he said. Look how he cried. He fasted. He says, my tears was my food. Notice how he says, you can have my kingdom. Take my kingdom. It don't matter to me. Take my kingdom. You can have this palace, but don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Like you did Saul. That's what he's saying. I know what you did to Saul. You took his spirit, your spirit away from him and turned an evil spirit. But although I fail, have mercy on me. Oh God. He says, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a, a right spirit, a steady spirit. I don't want victory today and fall tomorrow. I want to be steady. I want to be steady. He's the one that wrote uh, 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 um, and, and cleansed me from all secret faults. That's, that's David. And, and let not these presumptuous sins have dominion over me. These willful sins, don't let it have dominion over me. Then let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So God bless you all. In Jesus' name, it's nine, 10 after nine.